Our planet is a ticking time bomb. With a long list of potentially life-ending threats, SpaceX's CEO, Elon Musk, is going all in on interplanetary travel, hoping to give humanity a new lease on life. But getting to Mars and beyond is harder than it seems, and exploring the vast reaches of space will require us to travel at an insanely high speed. No rocket in production has been able to achieve that kind of speed until now. One of NASA's engineers is developing an engine that doesn't use any propellant and can achieve light speed. This engine basically defies Einstein's theory of relativity, which prevents anything from moving faster than light. If it is developed, this engine could flip the entire industry on its axis and change how we explore space forever. So how does this physics-defying engine operate? And what does it mean for the future of space travel? Human beings have always been fascinated by the idea of alien life and distant habitable planets. Space has countless mysteries, and we've barely started unveiling the ones in our solar system, let alone our galaxy. The closest star system to Earth, Alpha Centauri, is more than 4.37 light years away. It would take us thousands of years to get there with our fastest current technology. And even if we traveled at full light speed, it would take a long but far more acceptable 4.37 years to get there. Elon Musk's goal has always been to make life multi-planetary, establishing a permanent human settlement on Mars with starships ferrying people to and from the red planet. According to Elon, relocating to other planets besides our own could save humanity in the case of a cataclysmic event on Earth, such as nuclear war or the eruption of a supervolcano. But to make that dream a reality sooner rather than later, Elon needs one thing, a crazy fast vehicle. Traveling at that kind of blistering speed requires massive amounts of energy. Typically, that energy energy is contained on board the spacecraft as fuel, but extra fuel adds to the spacecraft's mass, which makes it even harder to propel at those speeds. And that is where NASA engineer David Burns comes in. He claims to have developed an idea for an engine that could accelerate 99% the speed of light without using any fuel. On paper, it works by taking advantage of how mass changes at relativistic speeds, which are those close to the speed of light in a vacuum. It has been submitted to NASA's technical report server under the title Helical Engine. This study has aroused the same level of excitement as the early days of the EM drive. There have already been headlines claiming that the engine could break the rules of physics. To demonstrate this concept, Burns presented a box with a weight inside, threaded on a line, and a spring at either end bouncing the weight back and forth as a thought experiment. In a vacuum, such as space, this appears to wiggle the entire box while the weight appears to stay still, similar to a stabilized GIF. The box would stay in the same place overall, but if the weight's mass was raised in just one direction, it would result in a stronger push, and therefore thrust in that direction. When the ring hits the end of the box, it bounces backwards, changing the direction of the box's reach coil. This is action-reaction, often known as Newton's third law of motion, and it limits the box to wiggling back and forth in normal situations. However, as Burns suggests, what if the ring's mass is significantly higher when it slides in one direction than in the other? The box would then have a stronger kick on one end. It would move forward as action outpaced reaction. Physics does not prevent this mass shift. According to Einstein's theory of special relativity, objects gain mass as they approach the speed of light, an effect that must be taken into consideration consideration in particle accelerators. In actuality, a simple version of Burns' notion would be to replace the ring with a circular particle accelerator, where ions are rapidly accelerated to relativistic speeds during one stroke and decelerated during the other. However, Burns thinks that instead of using the box and rod, the particle accelerator should be used for both lateral and circular movement, in which case the accelerator should be helix-shaped. That gives the theoretical project its name, the helical engine. The engine accelerates ions confined in a loop to moderate relativistic speeds, and then varies their velocity to make slight changes to their mass. The engine then moves ions back and forth along the direction of travel to produce thrust. He wrote in his abstract, The engine has no moving parts other than ions traveling in a vacuum line, trapped inside electric and magnetic fields. It will be huge though, like 200 meters long and 12 meters in diameter kind of huge. It'll also have to be powerful, requiring 165 megawatts of power power to generate one newton of thrust, which is about the same force as typing on a keyboard. As a result, the engine would only be able to achieve practical speeds in space's frictionless environment. If you had enough time and power, the engine itself could reach 99% the speed of light, 
Burns says. Proposals without propellant aren't new. Robert Cook, a U.S. inventor, patented an engine in the late 1970s that claimed to transform centrifugal energy into linear motion. Then, in the early 2000s, British inventor Roger Scheuer introduced the EM drive, claiming that it could convert trapped microwaves into thrust. Due to a violation of the conservation of momentum, a fundamental law of physics, neither concept has been effectively demonstrated, and both are commonly thought to be impossible. Martin Tajmar of Germany's Dresden University of Technology, who has tested the EM drive, says the helical engine will most likely have the same issue. To my knowledge, no inertial propulsion system has ever functioned in a friction-free environment. He explains, Unlike the others, this machine uses special relativity, which confuses the image, but unfortunately, there is always action-reaction. However, Burns admits that there is potential to harvest most of the energy that the accelerator loses in heat and radiation. He also suggests ways that momentum could be conserved, such as in the spin of accelerated ions. I know that it risks being right up there with the EM drive and cold fusion, he said, but you have to be prepared to be embarrassed. It is very difficult to invent something that is new under the sun and actually works. We've mentioned the EM drive a couple of times now, and it's well worth looking into. Also known as the impossible drive, the device Ice basically bounces radiation inside a closed chamber, which produces propulsion. Just like the helical engine, this is a major deal because all types of rocketry, and indeed all forms of motion throughout the cosmos, require momentum conservation. You have to push off of something in order to get moving. Your feet push off the ground, airplanes push themselves off the air, and rockets propel themselves forward by pushing propellant out the back end. However, the EM drive does not. It's essentially a box with microwaves bouncing around inside. Explanation for how the EM drive might work go beyond the realm of known physics. Maybe it's interacting with space quantum times vacuum energy, despite the fact that this energy prevents anything from pushing off of it. Even though there are no examples in our known history of experimentation, it's possible that our knowledge of momentum is flawed. Or maybe the EM drive experiments have revealed some brand new physics. It is possible that the EM drive could change physics as we know it, but it has a long way to go before it gets there. The results of its experiments so far have been disappointing to say the least. Every few years since the EM drive concept was introduced in 2001, a group claims to have measured a net force originating from their gadget. But these scientists are measuring a minuscule force, the kind that wouldn't even move a piece of paper. As a result, there's a lot of statistical uncertainty and measurement error. None of the published results have yielded anything more than barely qualifying for publication, let alone anything meaningful. Still, that hasn't stopped other groups from developing their own EM EM drives in an attempt to replicate the results. These replication attempts either failed to measure anything at all, or discovered some confounding variable that can easily explain the limited results measured, such as the interaction of the cabling in the device with the Earth's magnetic field. The EM drive and the helical drive aren't the only fictional technologies that have made their way to the space industry. Ion drives are now a staple in most satellites' thruster systems, but their potential still isn't fully unlocked. Ion propulsion technology's sci-fi principles have raised the bar for flying spacecraft over the last few years, replacing flaming rocket tails as the new in thing. Ion propulsion is around 10 times faster than conventional fuel and can run for long periods of time while accumulating a tremendous amount of speed. Instead of blasting an intense stream of fuel, ion thrusters use a principle known as ionization. Here's how the process works. Every atom of every element contains a certain number of electrons, which are negatively charged particles, and protons, positively charged particles. When an atom is neutral, its number of electrons equals its number of protons, which is its most stable condition. The atom has a net charge of zero. The amount of electrons in the atom changes when it is ionized, which is what ion propulsion systems are after. Ion thrusters work by removing electrons from a group of atoms and converting them into charged ions. Ions. A neutral environment known as a plasma is generated when the quantity of negative and positive ions is equal. Plasma is unique in that it responds to electric and magnetic fields. Magnetic grids inside ion thrusters produce fields and eventually expel positive ions. The spacecraft is propelled forward by ions blasted at extremely high speeds from the back of the spaceship. Chemical rockets use substantially more fuel than ion thrusters. It's hard to say when humans are finally going to achieve light speed. But one thing is for sure, we're on our way there. With an extremely innovative space industry and the world's richest man at the forefront of space travel, it may not be so long before we achieve light speed. What are your thoughts on the helical engine and the EM drive? 
When do you think the first light speed engine will be produced? Let us know what you think and more down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, welcome to the future.